So this was supposed to be a video on the fine art of double gunning. A tap on that. However, Simon Reinhold of Holtz Auctioneers had brought along such an exquisite pair of guns that just shooting them was an overwhelming experience. Going get blown over. over. <laughs> I don't know how you kept up for as many as you did. This is a tiring <laughs> exercise shooting them. And to be honest, it was one of those rare occasions that I was lost for words. Enjoy. I did talk about taking it off, but Sasha says this is the future of the countryside. Is it? Yes, this is the future of the countryside. This is the past. Okay. <laughs> if you if you want to wear a really casual hoodie on an open collar on a shoot day nowadays, you can. I'm leading the way. Simon. How are you? I'm very good. It's good to see you again. And you, mate. We're stood in a valley. We are. In Norfolk. They do exist. And, and this is one of the best. The strange shoot. Don't want to make any strange puns. Do you like <laughs> strange puns? You won't be the first, and you oh, sure won't be the last. I feel like it's like the obvious thing to do here. I'm wearing a thing. I you feel are. like it's a gas mask where we want and you're carrying two guns. I am. What are we going to do today? Well, that is a vintage Gannicky loader. It's very nice. And this is a pair of vintage guns, and we're going to shoot double guns. Like they would have done 150 years ago. Exactly. Victorian style. Talk to me about double guns. What's the point? Well, it's an increased rate of fire for one. That is pretty much what the Victorians were interested in, is getting as many shots off when, this is the era of big bag shooting. Um, wild big fashion. bags as well. Yeah. Uh, not 100% not wild, but uh, there was some rearing Increasingly. going on. Increasingly, well, yeah. Increasingly less wild probably at that point, but yeah. So, yeah. so uh, but also it was uh, the days of, you know, firing that volume of shots two guns meant you didn't get a burnt hand because it wasn't over and under. There wasn't a big fore-end piece of wood to protect your hand. So halving the rate of fire through each gun meant it cooled down slightly quicker uh, and it didn't have you scorching your left thumb muscle. So yeah, there's, there's several benefits to double gunning uh, for the Victorians in, in, at that particular time in history. So is that why pairs of guns exist? Prince, pretty much, yeah. They set the fashion uh, for pheasant shooting in that era uh, to shoot with a loader, someone who could hand you a gun once you had emptied your two barrels. I'm kind of excited to do this. This is, I mean, I've, I've loaded double guns before, heads yeah. of you, but never a pair of 150 year old hammer guns. Hammer guns with this. You know, nowadays you have a big cartridge bag carrying 200 shells and yes. those. But this is a, a Ganaki. Yeah. Look how cool that is. That is a proper vintage Ganaki. I've loader. admired them in Holt many, many times. Yeah, it's a very simple concept, but uh, quite brilliant in its way. Yeah. Just little oh. clips to hold the cartridges in so you can easily ac access them. I feel like I'm most impressed with the cartridges themselves. <laughs> what, these, these whole 21 grams suitable for vintage guns? <laughs> what? <laughs> May I suggest before we do anything else, we have a play? Yes. Let's go. Let's do it. Touching on rebounding locks, you must be very careful double gunning with non-rebounding locks. These are rebounders, obviously, they sit off the pin. Yep. But non-rebounders... You need to bring it to half beforehand. I've got to bring it to half before giving it to you. I'm going to make a crass comment saying it's a lot easier if the barrel's the correct way round, and all you have to worry is about a safety catch. Exactly. You yeah, have to grab a hold of as well. Exactly. There are advantages, but you, these are far cooler. But these are exceptionally cool. It's going to be a, a new sort of... It's going to take some warming up. Slow is smooth, smooth is fast. Yes. So I give it to you down. and take to the left, yeah? Of course. Happy days. All right. It's going to be vaguely entertaining at this yeah. point. Are you ready to try? I am. With a Ganaki, do you load from the bottom of the top? Uh, I don't no idea think either. it Fantastic. matters. I think you go exterior row, yeah, high and then, row, and then, then low row. Yeah, this makes sense to me. Yeah. Oh, just the one. Left. That's a tough one there. That is a tough one. Long way out. Sorry, sir. That's all right. No problem. Oh, should have had both. Apparently, at this point, can see why the uh, oh, push down. down thumb thing didn't catch you? on for yeah. Lotus. <laughs> yeah, but Lotus won't find the gun. Not easy. He's working hard. This is way harder work than over and under. Usually cocking both of those with your thumb at the same time. Yes. 
You really have got some skill in flat. That angle is a tricky one, I'm trying to. Oh. You're blowing over. Blown the over. <laughs> Hat's coming off at all. Oh, I still can't. Alright, how are you feeding? Well, From your point of view right now. Tired. You're get, did you just say you're getting tired? My left arm is getting tired. How are you feeling? Was the Victorian era would got anything stuck? Uh, no, he's doing pretty well actually at the moment. He's doing pretty well. This is thumb levers are not straightforward. Wing that left second one. Yeah, you know we did that video about obscure opening and assistance yeah. and how awesome they are. Yeah. I'm gonna delete that. Are you? Yes. Have you still got your thumbnail left on your thumb or there has is it been much off? pain and callus building on the side of my thumb where I'm shoving it in the hole at an obscure <laughs> angle? Yeah, don't get it wrong. It just takes a sustained effort to do both things, doesn't it? I'm gonna cool it at this point if yeah. that's right. How are we feeling about this, mate? They are absolutely stunning guns to shoot. Absolutely gorgeous. Well, I'm glad they're beautiful to shoot. They are, and you've worked hard. Because they're <laughs> picks to load. Yeah, they're not easy to load, but I tell you what, this is the period of gun making where a lot of invention was happening, and this was just one of the opening mechanisms that, that was around for five to 10 years before it was superseded by side levers and top levers. And it's time. But at its time, it was cutting edge. I it's got a cutting edge. Yeah, I was going to say cutting edge. <laughs> Have a look at your thumb. Are yet. you bleeding yet? I'm going to take a hacksaw and modify it. <laughs> <laughs> or just move it up onto the side, which yeah. seems a lot more logical when you think about it. Yeah, uh, but it, again, I'm not complaining because I didn't have to open it because you were doing it all for me. My, on, my only job was to cock the, th the hammers, which, as you saw, I could do both at once. That's a very smart move, by the way. But you can, because if they've got original springs in, they're not, they're not so strong. Modern springs, modern replacement springs, you'd struggle to do that. But with original springs, you can just go. So here's an interesting one, certainly from your experience. When they ordered these, how much sort of input would their man have? Because I feel like, Very from nice. my perspective now, I would want to go and order the guns. I go, I don't want any of that. That's going to make my life particularly difficult. Yeah, very little. Because as you said, the person shooting it, it doesn't affect in the slightest. Yeah, but it's, the, it's exactly the same as if, if he went to a tailor to order a new suit, he wouldn't take his valet along to ask how difficult it is to clean. It's his purchase as the Victorian gentleman. And this was cutting edge at the time. He would not have taken his loader's advice. Well, would you take mine? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> in scenario. Which is you don't want to use them again. I don't want to load them again. That, <laughs> that was... Truly a fascinating experiment experience. Insights, yeah. I've never loaded hammer guns before in a double gun scenario. Yeah. I've never loaded a push down thumb. thumb lever before. Yeah. Have you? No, I haven't. Well, I'm going to let you now experience what I just did. <laughs> okay. And you're going to go, yes, I as a valley would phone up the factory afterwards and go, cancel that order. I need ejectors <laughs> and a top lever. <laughs> There you go. This it's is not everyone's cup of tea, but they're such gorgeous things to use. And we got through what? Four, what 75. 75. In pretty quick succession. Uh, very quick succession. Yeah, I was. Well shot as well. Uh, thank you I very much. I a couple out the corner of my eye. Yeah. Very well shot. <laughs> well, you are a very Victorian looking gentleman, mate. Yeah. The, in the most handsome sense. That's very kind of you to say. I even had a shave this morning. Uh, <laughs> I did. I did. I thought about I thought about shaving. <laughs> the, uh, no, the, stock, like, the stock shapes of these old uh, hammer guns just seem to suit me better than pretty much anything else I pick up. Uh, I just feel instantly comfortable with one in my shoulder. It almost doesn't matter who the maker is. The shape, it's, it's one of those bits of a recipe that is almost undefinable. In I, the, I was gonna say, can you define it in any sense why that is? You could, you could measure this with lasers and yet you still, I'm not sure you would get the, you wouldn't be able to translate this onto a modern gun in the same way. I just doesn't think, nothing feels like these old guns. It's, it's very hard to explain why. The profile of the stock is significantly different to, I mean, some of the other things we've brought with us today. Yeah. I mean, there, there must be some tangible difference, but it's just interesting that you say that. Yeah. Well, the guys who actually, you know, built these stocks, shaped these stocks, were probably, you know, they probably knew the guys who were trained by Manton. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Going back, that, there's a direct lineage there at this particular period at, at Boss & Co. That's pretty cool. I mean, that is pretty cool. I'm just saying, uh, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Of all the things out there to think that that, that's heritage. Yes. And they're gorgeous because of it. I mean, they're gorgeous regardless of it. Yeah, they are. They're, it's a beautiful piece of gun. If someone produced that today, you'd still think it was stunning. Yeah. And that's why I was very pleased when the owner let me borrow them for the morning.
it wouldn't take it yeah it's, it's very interesting like it gives a totally different perspective yeah all of the things we've spoken about and looking at these inventions it's actually makes 10 times more sense the tiny the fine differences and all the things that we're fascinated by or i've been fascinated by suddenly make 10 times more sense when you go well the, the mark ii or the mark three or this particular maker had a slight lip and you go yeah that's i buy it on the back of that yeah i suppose a, a modern equivalent would be browning coming out with a left hand top lever or a slightly different rib yes exactly i mean these are practical lessons brought in from the field by clients by their loaders talking to their clients as well because you can see in here an example checkering on that thumb lever. Most yeah. of the early ones were never checkered. That's an element of thought that's been applied by the gun maker, learning from a client. That may even have been a special request from the client. Perfect. I'm nervous. Okay, don't be. <laughs> it's fine. Slow is smooth, smooth is fast. We'll just go at a nice gentle pace, and the more we get right, the more comfortable you'll feel. Thumb over. There you go. And if you slip, it's only going to go bang in the sky. If you slip, because this is a non, this is a rebounding lock, the hammer will not touch the firing pin unless it's you have all the to way be touched. No, the, ha the finger has to be on the trigger to disengage the sear for the hammer to touch the firing pin. That's one of the advantages of Stanton's rebounding lock patent. Which is why they became important. Because exactly. If you're there on peg going, but dumb. Yeah. Embarrassment. Exactly. Slow paced, wasted yeah. shot. Exactly. But it's also important to say that being a rebounding lock, this is another technological advance that allow people to be safer in the field. If you're shooting a non-rebounding lock, the gun who shoots has to bring it back to half cock to then give it to his loader, who then opens, the pins will be protruding through the face and sticking in the primer of the, of the cartridge. Would they have shot single over. guns back then? Probably an element of single gun and stuffing, yes, would have gone on. Yeah, it's difficult to say. That oh. never really got much coverage or much, you know, there were no lithographs made of single gun. For peasants. In, in, you know, in the Babington Library, you don't see too many single gun with a loader or a stuffer. So oh, let's have a go and then maybe we'll have a little go with something a bit more modern than a stuffer. Yeah, we could try different things, yeah. And we could but possibly sit out of the shower. <laughs> but this is probably weather. We've got a nice say, wind and showers. Came over now, it would yeah. be falling barometer and a good wind. That's what you want, shooting in Norfolk. And if a you're in valley. A, exactly, in a valley. Oh, that's uh, interesting. Yeah. Oh, there's a plate just there. there we are. Just behind it. Thank you, thank you. Oh, sorry, bit of a bit of a delay, sir. No problem. They shoot very, very nicely. They are. Be they're fair. beautifully balanced. How are you finding the? Uh... Not too bad, actually. It's amazing the extra thought process that are going into this chain of loading. Slow is smooth, smooth is fast. Your whole slow is smooth, smooth is fast thing also relates to shooting. It's it fascinating. Does. Bizarrely tiring, this sustained rate of fire from both sides, isn't it? <laughs> it is. It's amazing how your arms do get tired if you're not used to it. Nice shot. I can also see why they did away with hammers. It's all the things that we find very romantic now. <laughs> now they're actually in play become complete pain in the arses. Oh, slow Straight one. Sorry, nobody's watching. I'm hitting them. <laughs> Does that make you feel better? Best edited shot on YouTube. Very nice. Having a loader or Somebody to help you load certainly helps keep your head in the game. Yeah, you can focus 100% on your task. I don't know how you kept up for as many as you did. This is a tiring <laughs> exercise shooting them. Oh, I've worked something out. I feel more comfortable loading the left barrel first than the right, weirdly. It's definitely a neighbour's bird. Shouldn't have shot at it, really. <laughs> yeah, but you're number eight here, so you're fine. But that should have been. Yes, that definitely <laughs> Lovely. Smoked them. Lovely. All right, I'm done now. Are you? I'm going to take a breath. I'm going to cool it. For the... It's quite some experience, isn't it? It's very different. I rather enjoyed it. I have to say, I didn't, I didn't feel uncomfortable doing it. Once I got the angle right, yeah, you have just pushed out the hole. Yeah. And the first few mistakes are yeah. painful, but they, you feel... And them. then once I'd realised that left then right is much quicker than right then left for me, it became a much more simple operation. I think I was doing left, then right out of practice, but you shoot side by side more often, so for me That's it's true. not that much of a change. Yeah. Whereas for you it probably is yeah. very instinctive to... Yeah. I'm kind of mind blown a little bit. That's good fun, isn't that it? That was an experience. They're just joyous things to use. Again, we come back to it. It's just having getting the enjoyment out of every aspect of it. And this is one for me. My heart is kind of racing. I, yeah. 
That is a very exciting, mate. There's some faster ones down there. I'd say that we should move on to a more modern gun for that. Session. Okay, no problem. So, shall we grab a more modern gun? With, yeah, can with do. ejectors? Yeah. We have some ejectors. I've got one. So we've now moved forward 50 years. Yes. To ejectors. And stuffing is starting to become more common. Uh, yeah, I mean, well, single guns certainly are. Single guns definitely are. Uh, as shooting has become more of, uh, it's, it's sort of moved out of the, the purview of purely the aristocracy and the landed gentry, and it's moved down to successful businessmen who decided that, you know, they wanted their part of their leisure time to imitate what the aristocracy were doing because they were making more money than the aristocracy. So, yeah, it's. Um, the shooting now, party moved down. Here. It did, uh, and you know there are, there are varying degrees of that um, spending power, and single guns is one way you can get into the game in the sort of 1910s, 1920s. Yeah. And now you've got an ejector. Yeah, you don't, you need don't necessarily so need a loader, and you don't necessarily need yeah. to to have a pair exactly. When you can shoot potentially a similar sustained rate of fire. Yeah. With a loader. With yes. Two guns. Flicking to halts. Yes. That pair of guns. Yeah. What can one enter the pair of gun market for? Cybersides. Are you talking English? No, just start at the bottom, work your way up. Start at the bottom. You can, you can pick up a pair of guns for 900 quid, 1,000 pounds. Spanish. That's not bad. We've got a pair in the next auction for, I think they're 1,000 to 1,500. They're virtually unused. That's... But they're not the highest quality Spanish guns you'll ever see, but they so are you a might true... Need a second gun. Yeah, <laughs> they, they are. Yeah, we get a box of parts with it, except it comes in, you know, ready-made form. No, it's... But the, the point is, they are a consecutive numbered pair. They're a true pair. Came out of the factory Pretty built special. as a pair. But you know, you're not looking to spend more than 1,200 quid on them. So now talk English. Something with a bit of history. Something with a bit of history, a bit of interest that's not completely wrecked. Uh, you're probably going to be looking at three to five, five to seven thousand pounds. That's box locks and box entry locks. level side locks. Yeah. Yeah. Something like that. And what about? Guns like that that are mind-blowingly historical, and they've done something strange to my stomach. Right, yeah. that is. If it is, if it has provenance, a good provenance with an interesting historical character. Let's let's pick the one that that's most common on the Antiques Roadshow. If Winston Churchill's pair of guns came up for auction, yeah, that alone would add significant weight to the price. Okay. How about not Winston Churchill's guns? <laughs> a pair of good quality hammer guns. You don't often see a pair of hammer guns, so it does depend entirely on the barrel condition. I mean, there are lots of caveats here. There are a lot of moving parts in where Usable. these find them. Usable pair of hammer guns, you would probably be looking at 5,000 pounds. Starting. Yeah, and the sky's depend, the... depending on who made them, but there aren't too many pairs of hammer guns that come onto the market. We did see quite a few come on 15, 10, 15 years ago. There were pairs appearing, but they don't often appear now as, as pairs of hammer guns. So it's quite unusual to see them. And if they do turn up, they'll be quite competitive and quite sought after for the very reason that you've just discovered. There's nothing quite like shooting them. Yeah, that is so, so it's special. It is, it's a special moment. All right. Um, I'm going to let you start with this, mostly okay. because I think people are going to be fascinated to watch you shoot. <laughs> I am one of those people. Okay. Shall we? This is going to be an interesting exercise. Because I've never shot with a shot cam on. You're basically putting a barrel weight three quarters of the way up the barrel on a side lock. Yeah, on an over and under, it doesn't make too much difference. No. On this, it's going to be... It's going to make oh, a it's, huge it's noticeable, difference. Because this gun's only got seven pound. Yeah. It's okay. Well, let's see how. Right, um, we're stepping up to a 28 gram as well. Fine. Um, because we're saving the 21s for weaker guns. Yes. Okay. And this is mine. Um, so it doesn't matter if we blow it up. Okay. I'd really rather we didn't though. No, let's not. Ooh. When stuffing, would you like me to put like the cartridge and tell you when it's done? Or are you happy to look and just make sure you don't stick my hand in there? I prefer to look down. That's gone off. Shut up then. Uh, because A, I don't want to take your thumb off or the tip of it. But B, if I am looking up and waiting for you to put in, I'm getting anxious and starting to move with, with my bird. Mm -hmm. So I don't want to be doing that. I want to keep the gun steady for you to put a cartridge in nice and accurately. Look up, address bird, yeah. shoot bird, if appropriate. Exactly. Now, my most common stuffer is my youngest son, who loves it and is very good at it. And I don't want to take his fingers off <laughs> and ruin his mood. But if you're going to do it to anyone, he's probably the... Uh... Well, I'm allowed to, apparently. They are quick. They're, they're so quick, but I can't help but kill them. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. And he bluffed it out of Didn't need read to it. shoot the second target. Yeah, no. 
Oh, that's a different they're angle. They're big. They are big. They're big and they're quick. Although going that way into the wind, they're slightly slower. We're about to stuff Simon's gut. Oh, he hard. opens, they eject. I go in, they're in. Oh. That's it. Somebody else putting the ammunition for you, loading for you over a single gun. Stuffing is a terrible word for it. It is. There's a lot of arguments about stuffing versus double gunning. Yeah. And everyone says they're about the same speed. It depends. If you're an experienced double gunner, double gunning is quicker. If you're an inexperienced double gunner, stuffing is usually quicker, but not in all, not in all instances. It's about getting your core working for you. Lovely. There we go, crosser. Sorry. But with the speed they're going, you haven't got time to make that decision. Weight-wise, where are you on these? All on your back foot, clearly. Oh, with your no, that was, that was an indecision. The angle. That, that was, was indecision. I had to adjust in the middle of the shot because I thought it was going to come out the same angle, but it didn't. But that's part of game shooting is you have to be reactive. Back. So with those two, yep. my left heel is coming off the floor. My weight is shifting onto my right leg to be able to get my rotation from my core. Toes just slightly turning my core so that the core can do the rotation. But, I was explaining to someone the other day that the whole front weight thing that we all used to be taught as kids, or I was taught as a kid, is dead. It is. For these kind of birds, yeah, it is. It's not helpful. Although it does be look to... beautiful. If you can manage to get that arc back and keep your back heel off the floor, that is, I mean, that is the West London Shooting School. Yeah. Lanco. But when they're high and fast like this, it's best to be on the back foot. You're, just, you're more stable for the second shot if you need it. Professional opinion. No, up the side. Cheap pair, good single. Good single, every time. Oh, hands yeah. getting hot. And then now, now you're like, a cheap pair would be really nice yeah, right now. Yeah, a cheap pair would be perfect to stop you burning your hand. But then you can buy a glove to go with your cheap single, your good single. Lovely shot. Let's finish on them. But it's been a fascinating experience, mate. Just, that was very special. And then watching you shoot game, just under a complete aside in your game style with a cyber side was also very special. That's very kind of you to say. It doesn't always go well. <laughs> well, it didn't, but you know, for the most part well, it did. I seem to have a fondness for this particular Stephen Grant side lock ejector. It's a nice girl. It's lovely. Very, very, feels easy to shoot. And there's very few guns that give you that sense of, oh, I could do anything with it. This. this one of those guns. Always has been, ever since I shot it. First time I shot it, it was two years ago. Air as well. Yeah, exactly. And it's still got that feeling. It's a very nice thing. It's a cracker. But Grant made beautiful guns. And you could buy one at Hot Auction is. <laughs> yes, you can. For yeah. reasonable money. Yeah. For the price of an entry mid level for a mid-level game gun, you can yeah. go and buy London's best. Yes, you can. These days, yes, you can. And it's a very different experience. You could have brought your the laminate out, your yeah. 525 laminate. It's yeah. a very different experience. It is. I was shooting it yesterday, shooting high performance steel, high performance steel at Pigeons yesterday in a teeth of a gale force wind. Couldn't have done that with this because I wanted to use high performance steel because I'm still experimenting. Standard steel will do most things you want out of these as long as the choking's right and the barrels are okay. Um, but this is just a, a beautiful things to, to shoot. They really are. Thank you very much for this experience. Well, thank you for allowing me to, you know, show how much I like these things again and the reasons why. There's nothing like them. You walk away with a smile. So, yeah, that's it. And I'm trying to think about it, but it doesn't need to be more complicated than that. No. They give you a good feeling. Yeah. On the inside. Yeah, it's, it is a warm, fuzzy, yeah. excited, like yeah. getting behind the wheel of a sports car feeling. Yeah, because you know how much work has gone into building this. And, and there's a heart and soul of several different specialists poured into building these things. It's older than any man alive. Yeah. That's wild. Yeah. Still going strong. Poor woman. <laughs> right, thank you again for this experience. Pleasure. Um, a final word that we are actually stood on one of the simulated drives of the Lestrange shoot. They've been very kind to host us today. Yes, thank you to them. I'd quite like to come on a sim day here. It, it's really good. It's really good fun. I mean, you've just given a taster of, of some of the speed and the height of those those clays, they are, yeah. you'll see them on the shot cam hopefully, they are way, they're well up there and, and they're good fun. We are actually, for all the joking, this valley is quite serious. Yes, there's several drives in this valley going further down and it, they are very special. Yeah. Uh, this is somewhere I've picked up, my dad comes picking up here, he was here all last season, I picked up here for Gareth to keep, keep here and it's a lovely place to be. Come and have fun with guns. Yeah, and those are some of the best, fastest, highest clays I've shot. Like some of those, catching the wind up that height. Brilliant, absolutely brilliant. Yes.
channel members will have heard my full thoughts on this. But I implore you, if you like guns or shooting, seek out an experience like this. It was a truly pivotal moment in my understanding of guns, and of course, a top 10 gun moment. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.